Growing up in an environment which fosters creativity, Annette of Annette Morizat Art discovered her love for art at an early age. Her passion has grown and she has discovered different facets of creativity which led her to embrace art fully, with a decision to live the artistic dream. Where else but in the south of France? Listen as we deep dive into her journey as an artist, how teaching became an integral part of her growth, building community to celebrate creativity, granting a safe space for artists to express themselves, and how a bin sketchbook is a must-have, how crafting and telling stories became instrumental in her drawing and capturing moments, emotions through art. If you want to be part of the conversation, then send in your questions and topics you want us to cover to hello at etcherlab.com. And we would love to hear your voice too. So do send in your recording and we'll get them featured in the next episodes. Hey, this is Jesse, and I'm an artist and studio host for Etcher Lab. We believe in your power to create. So we invited artists from all around the globe to inspire you to keep on creating. So join us in this journey and let's celebrate creativity. This is Make More Art, the podcast. Annette, thank you so much for saying yes to this interview with me. I'm excited because I've seen your works and your journey. I've read through it, but I would really love to hear it straight from you. So could you please take us through the time where everything started for you? Where that spark, you know, that moment that it lits up and says, okay, this is something that I would really want to do. Art is something that I'm really passionate about. Well, that's a really difficult one, simply because I think it has to start when you're a child. But it did mm. for me. Okay. You know, um, I always loved art. I loved making things and, you know, being a creator. And I think uh, when, when we're children, we have no fear either. So, you know, we just do stuff and we, we lay down colour and lines and we draw what we see and it's fabulous. And um, so I guess it had to start there. And I knew very, when I was very young, that I was definitely a bit more of a right brain person, not a left brain person. <laughs> yeah. So I, I kind of knew my strengths and weaknesses quite early on in that regard. But of course, as you get older, mm -hmm. um, uh, things change, life happens. And uh, although I pursued art and graphic design through school, of course, and my grandfather was an artist and my dad is an architect. So I kind of always, it was always there, the kind of drawing thing. Okay. But then when leaving school, um, you know, it's, it's a bit like life happens. And uh, I, think it, I think John Lennon was quoted as saying something like, you know, every child is an artist until someone tells them that they're not. But do not. Yes, <laughs> I'm familiar with the code. Yes. And of course, you know, back then it was like, well, how, you know, how am I going to make a career out of doing this? I, I have to get a, a proper job. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did, you know, I, I started, uh, started uh, my work, but it was still always in creativity. And I was lucky enough to move to the English Lake District. I'm British. Um, and I moved to the English Lake District, which is, which is beautiful. It's it's such uh, an inspirational place to be. So even though I still kind of was, I had my, my career, yeah. uh, I was still, I was still practicing art. Mm -hmm. And I actually had an exhibition there and one of my paintings was used by the National Park for many years as a representative image for them, which was such an honor. Yes. And uh, Anyway, skip forward a few years. I, art has always remained part of my life. And I now live in France, mm -hmm. in the south of France. And I've been here for full time, yeah, like 12 plus years. And part of my, my dream, I mm -hmm. guess, of coming here was to live that artistic dream, to, to fulfill my goal, mm -hmm. my life goal with art and of course again it's a beautiful place it's very inspirational mm -hmm. but um, if you have ever tried to be self-employed and set up a new business and do that in a foreign country it is tricky it is hard mm -hmm. so <laughs> so Imagine. I have been I have been doing other things since I've been in France and it was only about oh, I don't know six years ago 
I was invited through a friend to teach at a local college. So whilst my, my kind of business has been creating graphics, websites, all things visual, I love mm. color, I love visual uh, representations of things. And a friend invited me to teach at a local college, some French adults, oh. but not art, it was computer skills. I was like, oh, okay. So I did that for a year and it worked. And I don't have any formal teaching qualifications, but I thought, wow, you know, mm -hmm. if I can teach this, I can teach art because I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. I love it. So, so my, uh, my, my, I started running workshops mm -hmm. uh, just locally to me. I'm based uh, in the south of France, not far from the Mediterranean, kind of close to Spain in the corner that most people don't know. They call it the largest vineyard in the world because it's very agricultural. There's loads and loads, the longer wine region mm -hmm. this is. So I started running workshops. And since then, uh, I've had exhibitions. Uh, I had a couple last year. And I run sketching holidays. And of course, since the pandemic, yeah, uh, everything kind of changed very rapidly. Yeah. So uh, my students said to me, well, will you, will you start teaching online? And I was like, oh, yeah, well, I, I guess, guess I will. So, but in the interim and before COVID, um, one thing that I, that I did do and, and really changed my life, I guess, was I uh, set up with a couple of friends, our local Urban Sketches chapter. So it's, it's the official group for this, this area. Mm -hmm. And I have lived in three countries and some fantastic places, but it was only when I connected with the urban sketching community, I felt I had finally found my tribe. It was just, it was, it, it's just amazing. And not only have I met some incredible artists, um, wow, but amazing, amazing people and inspirational people uh, from all over the world. So. Mm -hmm. You know, although I've traveled, actually, my tribe is everywhere. Yeah. So it's amazing. I just, yeah, incredible. I highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> I could just listen to you all day. I mean, I mean, it's very interesting that as a child, you, you already knew that creativity and art is something that you really love to do. And I normally ask this question of, have you always been creative? And you already, you started saying, sharing that story. And the other question that I would normally ask is that the environment that you grew up in, because like what you said, you know, art is something that people would consider, okay, you have art as a hobby, then you have to get like an actual job or something <laughs> like that. But what's also interesting about your story is that you have people around you growing up who are also very creative. And you mentioned about your grandfather and I I remember vividly reading your post about him. I was like, oh, that is that is just a you know a lovely story um, about your grandfather. Would you say that he is your ultimate inspiration for your art? Because you mentioned something about your style is somehow similar to his. Yeah, that 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 was uh, quite uh, surprising to me actually because it was completely uh, unintentional and I hadn't ever noticed it before. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, he, he was a very inspiring man. And, and my father too, you know, with his architectural, you know, he's, he's very much more left brain than I am. But, you know, seeing his work and how he has adapted his own drawings as a hobby, uh, I, I have found quite interesting. And I, I definitely see that in my own work. And I think for anybody that has that encouragement from an early stage, whether you are five or 55, Mm -hmm. If you have somebody or people around you that, you know, encourage you to just keep going, then you just don't know what you're capable of. And, and so that's, I'm very grateful to have had that in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and as I say, now with the urban sketching community uh, and the community like you have it with Echa, right. you know, it's just, it's kind of growing and, and surely that has to make the world a better place. I absolutely 100% agree. When you talk about art community, I personally can attest to that. Everything that I'm doing right now, it's because of the people around me, it's because of the community. 
and that's what I really love about your story and that and the workshops and then how you started this local community of urban sketchers and now it's it's growing for you. So can you take us take me back to the time where I remember the part of your story when it was a light bulb moment for you that if I can teach this, you know, uh, the computer thing and then I probably can teach art too. Were there any sort of like reservations or it was more of like, I'm ready to do this? Oh, I think uh, I think everyone has uh, reservations when they step out of their comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and that is completely normal. And uh, it's like that, you know, feel the fear, do it in any way. It's easy to say. Yeah. And uh, I think a lot of people, especially creative people, suffer with a kind of imposter syndrome. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, I, nobody's like, nobody's going to take me seriously. I can't do this, you know. And it was only because... Uh, I had people around me that would say, well, you know, we love what you do yeah. and you help us, you help us simplify this so that we can do it too. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it just kind of grew from there. But of course, every time you feel that resistance of, oh, no, I can't, I can't, or I, you know, I'm no good or whatever, that's because you're growing. So oh, if you ever feel that with your art, just push on through because it's, it's just your, your ego trying to hold you back. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. No to self, no to self. <laughs> um, Annette, when, when you started this local um, community, what was the ultimate goal for, for this? Because there are a lot of people who, and this is very common with artists, that they would say that they're very introvert and, you know, stepping out and meeting other artists could be a little bit overwhelming at times or at some point. So how did you incorporate that factor into creating this local community of urban sketchers? Well, having been Mm self-employed for a very long time and being a creative self-employed person means you spend a lot of time on your own. I have have found in my experience. Mm -hmm. And that, although I would say a lot of artists are extrovert introverts, uh, uh, we, we kind of need each other. Uh, and especially living here, uh, I, I also wanted to integrate with my community. You know, uh, I might be British and I am an immigrant here, but I want to feel like I belong here too. And I want to meet people that are like me, mm-hmm. whatever language they speak. So I guess it, it was also about uh, getting me outside, getting me out the house so that I could sketch with other people, especially as a woman to go out and sketch on your own is quite daunting and a little bit frightening. (laughs) So uh, to be able to be in a group is just wonderful. And I do recommend it for anyone who's maybe looking for a sketching buddy. Yeah. You know, you find someone that lives closer to you that you can hook up with from time to time, because I think that does hold a lot of people back, especially if they want to get out sketching. It was like, oh, I can't do this on my own. Um, and when you're in a group, it feels a lot better, it feels a lot safer. Yeah. Um, so, so for me, it was about integration and almost kind of like forcing me, forcing me out there in a way, because mm-hmm. it's so easy to just kind of say, oh, you know, I'll use a photo reference or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but once you start sketching from life, it's a little bit addictive because it just you, you can't compare it to working from photo reference so so different yeah so so different thanks Annette so in your travels because you mentioned that how long have you been living in France uh 12 12 plus years 12 plus years and you mentioned earlier that the decision to move is of course this is a beautiful country and you want to really um dig deeper into your artistic self and this could be a perfect place for it and as you described it earlier i was envisioning because i've been in 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 france in paris and when you were describing the place i was like i should go there (laughs) especially the vineyards and all that it's like a picture playing in my mind frame by frame as you are describing it and that speaks a lot coming from an artist i I think it's it, it comes with with territory that when you describe something, it's it's so vivid. Um, so in your travels, because I know that you hold workshops where people gather together from this one place to another and they, they do sketching. Which one is your favorite? Oh, wow. That's really, yeah. really, really, really <laughs> difficult. I, I suppose it has to be the, the, the small villages. 
Mm. Um, simply because uh, when you're in a in a that place, part of the thing that I really love to try and capture mm-hmm. is that sense of place. And mm-hmm. and of course, uh, when you're out in the vineyards and there's the, the nature and the landscape, that is fantastic too, by the way. But I think when you're in a village mm-hmm. where you've got the element of human uh, interaction. Mm-hmm. And you look at an old door, and at first you just think, well, you know, it's a door. And then you might think, well, actually, it's a really, really old door. And look at that bit that's missing there. And then you kind of start building this story around this door. And you might see someone go in the door, come out, or look through the window or whatever. And then, you know, a whole new kind of universe just comes out of this simple thing because you were in that street at that time on that day. And it's it's and that it, for me is all part of the location sketching and urban sketching is it's much 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 more than just putting a few lines and a bit of paint on paper. Mm. It's it's telling a story as you see it as you understand it at that time. At that time. Uh, so so that it's that's why I always say to people, please don't bin your sketches, <laughs> <laughs> even if even if you don't like it or at that moment, Mm -hmm. and you don't want to put it on the wall, or maybe you do, please don't get rid of it because it's part of your life. You were there. And not only were you recording a moment in time as you see it, but when you look back at those sketches, whether you love them or not, they will bring back all that memory again, as if you were there. So you'll remember what the weather was like, maybe what you had for breakfast, who you were with, what the air smelt like, what the temperature was like, like all of you is in that sketch. And that's before you even get into what you learned through making the sketch as, as an artist. So it's kind of, it's magic. Love that. <laughs> I think I, I, I want to capture that entire um, the thing that you said about capturing moments and telling a story by just specifically what, what you gave as an example, a door. For someone, it could be just a simple door, but when you zoom in, right, and you not- notice the details, it's a very old door. I just love how you how you were detailing it. And for for artists, it's different how they capture moments. But for artists like you, as an urban sketcher, it's like preserving that moment right there and then capturing the details of that moment. And then I also like the part when you said it doesn't matter whether you like the sketch or not because when, when you look into it and it will remind you of all these memories that you captured right there and then. Would you say, Annette, that that is sort of your advocacy and that's the whole reason why you started all of these things that you're doing, your online workshops, the holiday um, workshops that you're doing, and then creating this community of um, urban sketchers? I guess the, th- the thing is with making art mm-hmm. is that you can I they come at it from a very technical perspective and look at techniques and materials and a kind of look at art history and a very like that kind of perfection or you look Mm -hmm. at how it makes you feel and and that emotion that connects you to to that that experience of making art whether it is just drawing a stick man on the back of a matchbox or something or whether it's playing with paint uh in that moment do you feel good What does it make you feel? And so if your connection uh, with art, and I guess this is where I come at it from with the workshops, is uh, if it makes you feel good, do more of that. There can't be anything wrong in that, can there? But a lot of people people come into sketching maybe because they want to try a new hobby Mm -hmm. or they just want to get out of the house and meet people. Uh, Some people do it for therapy, for meditation, Uh, to relax uh, without any particular goal. Other people may want to uh, make Christmas cards, so they want to learn how to do a certain thing. Other people might want to paint a pet portrait or, you know, they they have a goal in mind. Um, So I think the first thing is to identify for people how they feel. What is it they want to experience? And if they start feeling uncomfortable or it's not really enjoyable, then you know, stick with what you love, stick with how it makes you feel. And I think the urban sketching uh, is is really challenging. 
to draw on location. I admire everybody that does it. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, it's it's not easy. The wind is blowing or you might not be very comfortable or, you know, there's all sorts of things happening around you, lots of distractions. Um, Mm -hmm. But it, it really does connect you to a place and to people. And if that is if that is something that matters to you, mm-hmm. then I would say over and sketching is the thing for you. But of course, you can't always go out. So we it's do true. other things and we work from photos and we adapt that to kind of improve our skill set. That gave that gave me a like a sort of a a light bulb to ask you this follow-up question. Because I know that you do a lot of this catching on location but with the pandemic and all that and restrictions you moved your workshops online and how is it so far as transitioning from like live you know on location and you talk about capturing the exact moment and the details and the emotions at that specific moment how how was the transition in that from from that to online um, I, I guess because I'm really passionate about where I live, mm-hmm. um, my, 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 my theme for most of my workshops has been sketching France, sketching food or locations and things like that. Um, and I, I, have, I guess I've tried to continue that sort of, you know, okay, this is a burger, but uh, you know what is it? What does it? What does it look like? You know what is it made of? Um, in some of my workshops, I include kind of little bits of trivia and information about the language. Mm-hmm. So it's a kind of much more of a story than just the the actual thing that you're drawing. Um, so it, it try try you know like there are different words in French for different things. So I kind of incorporate those two. And, and I, you know, I'll be, I'll be honest that I have very small groups with the workshops and they are, uh, people can chat mm-hmm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. So there is a dialogue, which is really nice because it continues that community. Yes. And people have got to know each other. And obviously we have a kind of, uh, like Etcher does, you have a, a Facebook group that supports yeah. the workshops. So yeah. people can start to feel more confident, but it's in a safer environment because it's not kind of out there in public and people, something that's so, so valuable is sharing art. Yes. Because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So even if you've done a sketch and you can see all sorts of things that you don't like about it, you can share it and other people will just be blown away. And for, you know, uh, and I, I know people stumble with self-confidence a lot. And um, it's what it's, I guess it's those two things that come up consistently of things people feel uncomfortable about. And, and self-confidence is a biggie. <laughs> it is, it is. Um, and yeah, it's a huge topic with, with the podcast that I did with Anya as well um, last, last time. And I absolutely agree with what you said about having a safe space to really share your art because when you are in that space it it gives you that courage to create more because you know that people will not judge you or you know it's it's a safe place and and then I want to dive into your um how you work as an artist it's always interesting for me to learn because you're doing a lot of things you have this local community of um artists, urban sketchers, and then you do your online workshops. I'm interested to know how do you manage all of these things and then still making time for yourself to create for you, for your own, yeah. Uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm just uh, quite a, a, an organized person. I that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, year, I guess years of being in business and uh, I'm quite good at managing time. Mm-hmm. But uh, I've made, you know, over the years, I have, I have made more and more time for art, you know, and uh, I've got a couple of projects that, are, that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, and as I say, move, moving to France, you know, it was all part of a, a, a bigger plan. It's just taken me a, a bit longer to uh, kind of see it actually start to take shape. Mm-hmm. So you, you said that you're very organized and uh, 
we will definitely need to learn from you, Annette. I, I think for a lot of artists, that's one thing. Are you the type of artist that what is your zone of like your zone of genius time? Is it do you normally paint in the morning or do you have a specific time of day that you paint? Um, I, I'm definite. Yeah, I definitely feel more creative. I have uh, in the mornings. Uh, I get up early and I walk the dog. And I, I do a lot of, um, and I really value that time being out in the fresh air. It doesn't matter what the weather's like. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you just kind of look around at nature. And and that is a is such a gift to be able to do that, to look at the sky, look at, look at nature and look at all the colors. And I do a lot of thinking in that time. No technology. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Very inspiring. So I, I have a lot of ideas and come, come, come back and write them all down and eventually uh, kind of pick from the list one day. Mm-hmm. I have lists and lists. lists. <laughs> I'm a list maker. I love the list part. And it shows how much organized you are. And <laughs> spoken like a true artist, when you, when you talked about looking outside the sky and then, you know, the colors. When you're an artist, you really tend to recognize and you, you pay that, not that much attention with your phone and I think it's a huge struggle for a lot of people to really disconnect and sort of reconnect to yourself so that's a really good point that's a really good point so a quick question yeah go ahead sorry I was just gonna say one thing that uh is so so true is um you can't draw anything unless you really looked at it and I think that we, we jump to conclusions as we get older and we kind of have a lot of conditioning that goes mm-hmm. on in our life that we think we know what something looks like and we start to draw it quite merrily. And then we look at the sketch and we're like, oh, that, that doesn't look like that thing over there because our kind of controlling brain is taken yeah. over and, mm-hmm. and we're not actually looking at the thing. Mm-hmm. So you do... The more you draw, the more you start to look at things and really observe them mm-hmm. and look at those shapes and the colors. And it might not actually look like that thing at all, but mm-hmm. that's what it is. That's what it looks like. So, yeah. so taking time to really look at the, yeah. the subject that you're trying to draw. I, th- I think you mentioned this earlier that about the door. And then you said that it's a normal door, but when you take time to really look into it, you recognize it's a an old door, and then you start to build a story around it. I think that's the common theme that I'm hearing from you, Annette, is it's it's about creating a story about what you're creating and then drawing from, from, from that story. So it gives you the sense of perspective as well. Annette, when it comes to your drawing style over the years, because I know you've been doing this for quite a while and you've met, like what you said earlier, artists like you know the high profile ones and then of course you met with beginners and you've been teaching how has your style evolved through the years and are you planning to learn more and explore other mediums in the near future uh to we yes my style has changed Mm -hmm. uh definitely um i would say that i have now now i look back at earlier work i do see a kind of a style that was growing really, really many, many years ago. Mm. Uh, the, the, the more that you practice, I guess, that if you feel like, come back to that, if it feels good, do more of that. So a lot of people say to me, well, how do I find my style? How do I find my style? Oh, my question. Yes. There, oh, my there's God. an answer to that, mm-hmm. apart from just keep doing it. Um, and just as you were a different person when you were 20 than you will be when you're 60, your art style will grow too, it will change. It will be influenced by all the people that you've met and the places mm-hmm. that you've been, et cetera, et cetera. So I would, I would say one thing that has become a real passion for me is colour. Uh, uh, I, I, really, uh, I really love colour and playing with colour. And I noticed I used to, I used to work a lot in, in gouache. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay. which, is, which is really cool. Because that was kind of my graphic design beginnings. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, of course, those colours are, like, really quite vibrant. Vibrant. Um, but, of course, especially as, a, as an outdoor sketcher, yeah. um, having something portable was a lot more practical 
for that. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I, obviously I have tried different brands and experimented and I love that to kind of find the ones that suit you. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, everyone's different. Everyone has a favorite this and, a, you know, uh, so I've, I've been experimenting with materials, but I guess the ink and watercolor is, is something that I feel really comfortable with. Mm. Um, I have painted in oils and acrylics, Wow! but, um, but I would say that I, at the moment I am, I'm definitely kind of pursuing the, the watercolor mm -hmm. and, and ink and watercolor, mm -hmm. uh, definitely. Uh, and and I and I hope that it will continue to kind of change too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that you. Thanks, Annette, for for sharing that. Uh, I'm sure a lot of our listeners are very interested to know more about, of course, the tools that you're using and how your style have evolved through the years and what you're planning to do in the near future. So right now, you said it's watercolor and ink. That's what you really want to focus on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, watercolor uh, is is kind of it has a magic quality to yes. it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that I have really I've been enjoying, mm -hmm. um, and so it doesn't necessarily have to involve ink either. But I I do I do really love some of the more vibrant color palettes, mm -hmm. which is, uh, is a lot of traditional watercolor. Kind of doesn't have that. Uh, a vibrant energy to me yeah mm -hmm. but that's just my personal you know my personal taste <laughs> I love <laughs> color too I, I think like what you said magic it's there's something about you know magical about how the color bleeds with with water yeah. so yeah. and it, I know you've been we've been doing creative entrepreneurship for quite a while and this is a common theme that I would hear from artists is that it it changes when you're when you're starting when you were creating for yourself and it's it's like a hobby or something that you're just very passionate in doing, it changes when you transition to it being a business. What's your take on that, and how has the dynamic of you being an artist changed when you started doing creative entrepreneurship? Um, I I guess you you know you have to. Uh, like any business, you have to be everything from the coffee maker to the floor sweeper to the, the accountant mm -hmm. to, you know, looking at it from all angles and covering all bases, especially when you're starting because, you know, it's just new, really. Yeah. Um, from the making art perspective, uh, I, I do uh, some commission work and that to me uh, has, a, has a challenge all of its own because... It is still my work in right. my style. That's why somebody's asked me to do it, which is such an honor. Mm -hmm. But equally, it's important to me that they really like it too, that it's wow. something, the result is as they imagine it would be, Yeah, which is quite hard to kind of get your head around sometimes because you don't know what's in their head. And um, when it comes to creative entrepreneurship, um, I want to just touch on the part about commission works. I think a common question would be, did, do, did, are your clients, do they normally give you creative freedom to, because of course you have your own style. And sometimes there will be clients who will come to you with like a, a reference photo of this is what I would like. And how, have you ever had that, that you've ever been in that situation where in a client will have like a reference photo of what they want or like a, probably a copy of another painting and this is what we want can you make something similar to this? No, that, I haven't really come across that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. That's <laughs> great. No, I mean most most of the most of the place. Well, I guess I guess it's because of my this sense of place that's really important to me when I'm mm -hmm. when I'm working is I like to kind of try and get inside that place. So even at, you know if it was a pet, yeah. you know I wanted to know about this pet and the character of the pet. It wasn't just the photo. Mm -hmm. To try and understand that, to get that into the portrait and um, doing people's homes. Uh, obviously, uh, a home is a very special place. So doing, a, doing somewhere, a location, whether it's a town or a house or something like that, is trying to imagine that I'm there and, and what that really looks like. Um, so... 
Yeah, I, I haven't really come across a, a case of somebody wanting a copy of a painting. That's good. That's good. Such. <laughs> yeah, because it's it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle to say no. Uh, yeah, right. Because <laughs> that would be a plagiarism and copying. But it, it's good to hear from you that when you create something and draw something, it's not just a reference photo. You would want to really understand like the sense of place is what you said and the story behind the photo. Yeah, I mean, it's it, uh, not always possible to do, but I mean, I have actually driven out to somewhere to go and see it oh. for myself rather than just work from the photo. Yeah. Um, that so because that helps me enormously mm -hmm. uh, to capture it. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so that, but obviously that's, that's a luxury because mm -hmm. the world is a very big place. And not everybody can just <laughs> drive out. That is true. Well. <laughs> um, Annette, you mentioned earlier that you're a very organized person when it comes to managing your time for yourself, personal, and then your craft, and then all, of course, the extracurricular activities like teaching and the commission works. What is your, um, do you have a certain routine that you follow on a daily basis? Mm, apart from the dog walking, which uh, <laughs> is a kind of essential commitment for life, uh -huh. um, I, I would say not not particularly. I tend to uh, avoid technology if I can uh, for a chunk of the day. I'm I'm not uh, glued to my phone a lot of the time. Um, I I try and stay away from that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yes, I, you know, I, I use social media and everything like everyone else, and I find it, it's a really good place to dip into for inspiration and ideas and, in, you know, getting information. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I would say I do try and disconnect for a, a chunk of the day. That's good. And getting out, yeah, getting yeah. outside. If you can get outside and you are fortunate enough to just be able to you know, go to a coffee shop or take a walk or whatever, mm -hmm. that just gives you a change of a shift of perspective. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good advice. And that um, I think with, with the rise of technology, right, and everything being instant and the, the touch of our fingertips, we, we tend to get swallowed into a black hole of <laughs> mindlessly scrolling. And, but for you, what I'm getting is that you really make time for, for what you're really passionate about. It's, it's really a, a sense of discipline to, yeah. It is, it is, it is a discipline. And, um, you know, that magic word practice you mentioned earlier, um, you know, when people do a workshop, any workshop, it's a kind of experiment, isn't it? Because you don't know, you're going to sit down at the start of this hour or three hours and you have no idea how it's going to go. Mm -hmm. So all of that time is, is a learning process. And the only way that you can really use that to your advantage is to then go away and implement what you've learned, try and remember the bits that really worked well for you, and then do it again yeah. and again and again until you you know it feels more comfortable but um making the time and being disciplined about that is not, not so easy because other things get in the way and you know just like oh I don't want to do this on my own I'm not so motivated and that's where what Etch is doing and uh the the kind of social media thing is really powerful because people can dip into it and it's always there the danger comes with that horrible word comparison oh yes um because <laughs> people yeah. are looking at oh mine's yeah. not as good as that you know oh you know i'm no good i'll never be as good as that and that's just not helpful <laughs> that's true i've i've, I've been that road and uh, never going back <laughs> but and then I'm, I'm loving everything that you're sharing with me and um i'm really glad that you said yes to this interview because I mean, it, it feels like I'm in a sort of a workshop hearing you talk about your process, how your style, and it just goes beyond what people would see on the grid or, you know, what you're putting out there on social media. So just to wrap things up, Annette, um, if there's or 
if there are three things or anything that you would like to leave our audience and our listeners, especially those who are beginners, because I know you're a champion of people who are would like to dive into their, their toes into art and creativity, and you're all about community. So what are like bits and pieces of wisdom that you would like to share our listeners as their takeaway from this episode? Um, well, I guess if you if you are attracted to the idea of sketching and you want to see how it works for you, you have to get started. You have to try. Uh, but that doesn't mean to say it has to be a struggle. Um, the, the, the best analogy I have there is jogging, is that I don't like jogging. Sometimes I've thought that I would and I would give it a try. I would never be a good jogger if I didn't jog. I can't just go out the door and run five miles. You know, you have to kind of work up to it. But then you might, you know, you might buy yourself some new trainers or uh, you might get something on your iPod, some music that you really like, and it actually starts working for you. So it's kind of similar with sketching is find why you want to do it and kind of focus on that. So if you want to illustrate a recipe or you want to do some Christmas cards or you want to paint that house or that view or whatever it is, then just focus on that and don't try and do everything at the same time and as you're working and you're you're doodling around you know look at people whose style that you really like and try and copy it you know just uh there's nothing there's no there's no no rules <laughs> to say that you can't do that and a lot of artists will be honored uh if you are trying to you know you you're finding their style and inspiration and it's how you learn um but I'm a big fan of uh, what I call, I call it my bin sketch. Bin sketch. Um, bin sketch, which is, uh, there's nothing worse than uh, it's kind of sitting down and feeling completely daunted by that blank piece of paper. And the bigger the paper, the more terrifying it seems. So um, start small and allow yourself half an hour or 20 minutes or 10 minutes, whatever time you have, to not create anything. Take all that pressure away and just pick up two or three colors, keep it simple, uh, and just splosh some paint around. See what happens. And as you're doing that, you, you don't have any pressure to create anything. You're just little 10 minutes, you will learn loads. And you might create something and it will dry and you'll be like, wow, that is a beautiful, beautiful watercolor wash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you just don't know. But if you haven't got any expectation that's going to be a thing, then uh, and you can, you know, you can always reuse the paper or if it works out, you might actually recreate it into something else later on. But I think having a bin sketch is, is very helpful. So those are those are a couple of things. Those um, are yeah. golden nuggets for me in that. And I'm sure for our listeners, too. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, like what I said, I feel like I went through, uh, through a workshop about art and, you know, having the heart to really dig deeper and not just look over the surface. Just So thank you so much, Annette, for all the wonderful stories and um, bits and pieces of wisdom and for sharing your story with us. Um, it's really inspiring. And I know what you're doing within the community will impact a lot of people. So please continue doing that. And um, I look forward to seeing more of your works on the gram and teaching with Etcher as well. I uh, look forward um, to your live demo and mini workshop, which is happening, did you say October? Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. yeah, do watch out for that, everybody, because it's going to be amazing. And you will definitely learn what you've heard from Annette on the podcast. It's just tiny piece of what you will be learning through the live demo and the mini workshop. So Annette, thank you so much for being on thank the show. Um, again, yeah, couldn't thank you enough. I've learned so much and uh, take care of yourself. I hope that when it's a fan someday, get to meet you in person <laughs> knows when all of these things are over, but thank you for your thank time. You. Learning about Annette, her process and how passionate she is with making art is just inspiring and encouraging. I can vividly imagine her painting with friends over brunch, overlooking the vineyards or simply a mundane life setting. It's all about perspectives and capturing the moment as they happen. So here's a challenge for you. Take your sketchbook, walk outdoors with a friend, pay attention and start looking in closely. Connect 
create a story around it, and capture it in your drawing. How does it make you feel? Well, share with us your stories by leaving us a comment on the post associated with this podcast at etcherlab.com slash Annette. We would love to hear your thoughts, so please drop us a five-star review on the Apple Podcast or you can find us on YouTube at Etcher Studio. And, oh, hitting the subscribe button is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll catch you again next time. Until then, let's make more art.